gentlemen, we're back. Phantom Fights tonight. I'm your host tonight, TM Smith. Caleb Coho had to go away. Who knows? Probably dealing with his girlfriend, dealing with family. Who the hell knows? So I'm here tonight in his place. And of course, my co host for this match is you know him as the TV head, TV Phantom Head. And I guess you can now say TV trivia throwdown singles champion. Not to inflate his ego even more, Jim Green. How you doing tonight, Jim? One second, gotta point at myself a few more times. I am awesome. Uh, good to be here in Texas. Uh, and uh, to to I, I you know usually I don't jump on too many of these. You know, kind of dependent on the matchup. And this is a great matchup. You know, both of these guys. You know, nobody knows their their stuff like uh, Robert, but you know these two guys are a close second. Oh yeah, yes, the impressive showing that uh, Dominic had in his first match, and of course Malcolm, he knows his shit. He is, uh, I, I guess, what you what you can call one of the uh, strong stables of the Phantom Leagues. We've seen him around everywhere, and of, yes, and of course he directed uh, six great movies. So. Three and in three okay movies, he he directed uh, Middle Earth movies, so he knows his Middle Earth. But uh, uh, what or what do you think is going to happen with this one, Jim? Do you have any early predictions now? I predict that the person with the most points will win the game. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you, Jim. That was great. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll, we're going to see if Dom can keep up his undefeated streak or Malcolm. Breaks that and goes two and one, or will Dominic stay one and zero? But with that, we go into pre-match interviews right now. So I'm here again after my initial win against Jeremy, and it was a good match. It was a good match, but uh, I'm looking to keep uh, slaying, taking names, and Malcolm is on next on the list. Uh, I really shouldn't be worried because I've already beaten him multiple times now, but yet, I don't know. He just, he still keeps coming back for more. I guess he just likes getting embarrassed. What can I say? But point being, I'm here to win and yeah, let's get the show on the road. Yeah, I'm back in face against Dom. I mean, um, he's a good competitor. Um, it's basically going to be a race to be who can get Harry Potter first. Um, but, I mean, I'm not scared. I mean, I know it's going to be a hard battle, but um, I'm determined. I've been studying, and um, I may be pushing shit up a up a mount up a really tall mountain very hard, and it's probably going to roll back all over me. But um, I'm going to keep fight, and I'm just going to keep going to the end. Strong words there, Jim. Uh... Dominic is, I guess, as sure of his abilities as always. Malcolm not wanting to go down without a fight, saying it's a battle of Harry Potter. But well, it kind of is. Kind of is. If if either if you ask me, uh, if you ask me who wins, I would say whoever gets Harry Potter in the whoever gets that Wizarding World category in the second round could very well be the winner of this match. That is true. That is true. But I think they both have hidden talents we're going to see, too, because, I mean, a one out of eight chance, that's hard to hit, Jim. You'd be surprised. Very true. Very true. But that's enough of us. Let's go ahead and bring these guys in for proper introductions so we can get this match started. Introducing first with a record of one win, zero defeats, he is... Dominic Rizzi and his opponent coming in with a record of one win, one defeat. He is our president, Peter Jackson. He is Malcolm Lane. Right now, or with that, since we have both of them here, we'll go into the rules for round number one. Before we get before we get into the actual questions, and round one works as such. Each competitor will have ten questions from ten predetermined categories, worth one point apiece. 
There is no deduction for wrong answers. You will have 15 seconds to write your answer down on your whiteboard or pen and paper. We don't judge. Uh, when called upon, you will show your answers as well as verbalize them. As long as spelling is close, we'll accept it. Verbalization is the key. We've accepted some off spelling before, and I'm the king of off spelling and pronunciation. So that we'll we know, it. Tim. That we know. Thank you, Jim. All right. With that, Dominic, are you ready? Ready and waiting. All right. And Malcolm. Let's do this. All right. To kick us off our first question, we go to the champ, Jim Green. And your first question is in the category of the Lamp Studio, and it is Pixar. What is the name of the father sea turtle in Finding Nemo? Uh, the Lamp Studio, as you call it. <laughs> lamp rhymes with champ. Oh, dear God. <laughs> I can't wait to find your next opponent. <laughs> I can't wait to find them either because I will score two points against them and I will laugh in your face. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll make, just make it Nico because you always have that bad luck against him. <laughs> I will go five, four, three, two, one. Let's start with Dominic first. Crush, dude. That is correct. But we also will good subtract soda. a point for the uh, attempt at the accent. <laughs> and Malcolm. Crush. That is correct. Both of them hitting the first question. As we go into our second question, which is MCU. Lacoon. In MCU, Lacoon. your question, what is the name of the realm where Scott Lang travels in Ant-Man? So how's your football, Jim? It's good. I'm watching it right now. Because <laughs> we know with Texas, there's the Bible and then there's football. For me, it's just football. <laughs> All right, we'll go. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll go to Malcolm first this time. It's the quantum realm. That is correct. And Malcolm. I mean, and Dominic, sorry. I was about to say, I'm like, my name's not Malcolm. I feel like you guys just put this word in front of everything, Quantum Realm. All right, Malcolm gets two points because I did say technically Malcolm <laughs> first. <so. laughs> your, both of them. your next question uh, comes from Star Wars. Star Wars. What Star Wars film is the last one to be written by Lawrence Kasdan? Before he got out of the SS sinking ship. So I'm kind of curious. What game are you watching, Jim? Texas and Kansas State. Ooh, that's always a good matchup. All right, we will go. Five. I have a repeat to Christian. All right, our first repeat from Malcolm. What Star Wars film is the last one to be written by Lawrence Kasdan? Yeah, very good match. It's always a very good matchup with those two schools, Jim. I, I've always noticed that throughout the years. Indeed, indeed. We could talk about this Star Wars movie, but we don't want to give any any hints to what the Star Wars movie could be. Um, because, you know, we're not that nice. <laughs> Have they not seen this shit before with us? Come on now. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. You guys are both good. Uh, start with uh, movie guy, Dominic Grizzly. Solo a Star Wars story. Indeed, that terrible, terrible movie. Uh, Malcolm. Guy. I changed it from a Solo Star Wars story to Return of the Jedi, damn it. <laughs> oh, yep, that is incorrect. Incorrect. Uh, Malcolm had it, but he switched it to the other one. All right, your next realm comes in everyone's favorite, probably except for mine, in Wizarding World. What actor plays the role of Ollivander? 
See, Jim, I can't pronunciate right sometimes. You did say that right. Yeah. That's why I try to fix my spelling whenever I send it into Phantom TV so I don't have to hear from the grammar Nazi over here. I heard that he remembers everyone he ever sold, Mr. Potter. Ah. I'll take your word for it because I still have to watch them. I just bought them all, but I still have to watch them. But we'll go five, four, three, two, one. They're both ready. Let's go to Malcolm first. John Hurt. That is correct. And Dominic. John Hurt, rest in peace. That is correct. R.I.P. Jim, take it away. John, Christopher Eccleston didn't want to do this, so we're going to make you the war doctor Hurt. Uh, (laughs) Your next next category is not the world's DC. DC. Who directed Constantine? I don't know. I, I think this is a very underestimated film. I enjoyed it. I have not seen it. I have not really. Seen it. No. Ah. Oh. I've been watching movies I have not seen this week, and uh, I watched *L.A. Confidential* and *Lincoln*. Ooh, both two good movies. Indeed, ah. Guy Pierce is fierce in *L.A. Confidential*. Oh. Hashtag DVD cover. That's a stack cast for *L.A. Confidential*. It is. It it really is. Five. Four, three, two, one. Malcolm. <laughs> and on Zedia Smith, ha ha ha, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and Rizzy. Stephen Norrington? No, it's uh, Francis Lawrence. Oh, Francis yeah, that's right. Lawrence. And Rizzy that's misses right. one question. No perfect rounds here today. You don't get to see this mixed bag question that we literally have not changed because nobody gets perfect rounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shots fired. All right. In your next category of everybody's favorite mouse that wants to take over the world by buying everything in Disney. What Disney film follows a hero named Tarzan and his misfit friends on an epic journey against an evil regime? Taran. Taran. Taran, okay. It's not Tarzan because then you guys would all guess Tarzan. (laughs) And the answer is not Tarzan. I'm just waking up, folks. Can I get a repeat there? Yeah, please. Re- uh, no free repeat. Just repeat that because yeah, yeah you kind of yeah. fucked their you kind of fucked their thinking by saying Tarzan because they're like, yeah, okay. 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 I'm like, wait, what? The correct way to say it in Disney. What Disney film follows the hero, a hero named Taran and his misfit friends on an epic journey against an evil regime? I get fucking regime right, but I screw up. Or you could say Tehran, Tehran, Tehran. It's one of those. It's definitely not Tarzan. Yeah, I'm like I said. I'm still waking up. It's a busy which, day. if you think about it, if you if you do say Tarzan and his that does kind of describe Tarzan because uh, that guy is evil and so is the uh, so is the the, the leopard. Yeah, leopard. yeah. Five. Well, I think both of them are ready. Four, three, two, one. Yep. All right, let's go with Dominic. The Black Cauldron? That is correct. Right. And Malcolm, are you able to match him? I've not heard of uh, Treasure Planet. Oh, wait, sorry, Rizzy. We were looking for Tarzan. We were looking for <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, your next category is Star Trek. Star Trek. What year did Earth make first contact with aliens? I can't wait for this year. Because Is I'll be any... alive for it. Or will I? Wait, hold on. Is that like what year First Contact came out? Or like in, in, within the movies, what year Earth actually made first contact with aliens? What you, the I second thing you said. Hi. I'm okay. saying hi because you're trying to say hi. 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 We have Come like on. On. surprise Stop. visits from... To us, and we're just trying to be friends. Hi, with guys. Hi. <laughs> Rizzy, stop being mean. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is. Jim uh, it's the second thing that you said, Riz. Okay, yeah, got it. Within, within the timeline. Okay, got it. All right, let me get a repeat on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> what year did Earth make first contact with aliens? All right. If I didn't know any better, Jim, I'd say he's just setting it up for the free repeats. Like, this is the best use. I really, of, like, I'm serious. Like, I, this, I wish this stuff, like, I, I, I wish that I was, like, manipulating this stuff to go in my favor, but I promise I'm not. <laughs> I swear to God. That totally threw me off. Oh. <laughs> maybe you should just be nicer to people. No. Maybe I should, you know? Maybe I'm, I'm just so mean, you know? <laughs> All right, we'll go five, four. Three, two, one. Go to Dominic the Interrupter first. Oh my god, I, I, I missed it. That I told that question totally fucked me up. I completely forgot. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and Malcolm. 2025. Not even close. All right, we'll sort of. Uh, he was actually closer because he had a guess. Damn it. The answer <laughs> is 2063. 20 yeah, I, I wouldn't have gotten that either way. A spry. I wouldn't have gotten that either years way. years from now. Okay, your next category is Back to the Future, and your question is, who played Marty's mom throughout the franchise? I'm sorry, did you say something? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Are you going to have, like, a gang of people just come right to your apartment? This is, uh... <laughs> this is some <coughs> odd incesty stuff for basically this entire movie. Uh, and so yeah. she almost gets raped. So if we learn anything from Back to the Future, moms will almost bang their sons until they almost get raped. <laughs> uh, not the true thoughts of this movie that the filmmakers wanted, but we'll go. Five, four, three, two, one. Malcolm, you're up first. It was not Leah Thompson. <laughs> what? Uh, what? That, that... Uh, what? It it, it, it was, was Leah. Th it was Leah Thompson. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I, I I thought she played um. Some, damn it! Oh, oh! The Mo Five strikes again. Wow! How did you do that, Malcolm? What What was that? <laughs> do, do I just go now? Like yeah. yeah. Just, just 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 it's say Leah just Thompson. say Leah Thompson. It's Leah Thompson. <laughs> a point, Malcolm. Wow. Like, do such a thing. Oh, I, thought, I think it was embarrassing. God. So, oh, so wow. So, so we, we Wait, he, he wrote not Leah Thompson. Yeah, right? The like not Leah Thompson. 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 That shouldn't count. Like I'm just I'm just as confused as you guys are right now. Man, why Malcolm? Why have you done this? <laughs> I, I, I I thought she played um some uh your next your next question in um scores and soundtracks named name two of the three songs from beauty and the beast to be nominated for best original song and for the love of god malcolm do not put not before the title of it <laughs> what the hell is going on anymore jim this is our like wildest episode ever oh man you didn't have this during the TV fandom play ends. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I blame Daylight Savings. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's good. I'm so glad you decided to co-host today. Okay. Uh, we, we've handled a lot worse. This is just our third <laughs> moment, though. All right, let's see you both ready. So we'll go five, four, three, two, one. Dominic. Be our guest in Beauty and the Beast. Yep. That is correct. And Malcolm. Um, I just put Beauty and the Beast. I couldn't remember uh, the other one. Uh, okay. Well, he got one of them. He didn't put not, so he did get at least uh, get one. The third, the third <laughs> put not. That, that is true. That, that, the, <laughs> the third song was Bell. Bell, Bell. was the third song. Yes. All right. To wrap up this crazy round one with your last question. This time, actually, in the worlds of DC, what member of the team dies fighting Enchantress in Suicide Squad? 
major spoiler. If you haven't seen it yet, folks, I apologize. I thought there were no spoilers when it came to bad movies. You can never take that chance, Dominic, so I'll just apologize now. <laughs> and write Caleb Coho up later to add to his points for the year. Oh, Fun my. fact, Jim doesn't have any points for the year. Jim's been good. What? What did I do? Hmm? No, uh, I said you have no points for the year, so you've been a good boy. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. All right, we go to Malcolm. GA play? That is correct. And Dominic. But El Diablo, but like that's his name. That's his actual yeah. name. So that yeah, you're both, you both got it. All right. Actually, speaking, he is not the devil, but yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> kind of like you are not the wolf when you say El Lobo, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, coming out of round one, it looks like I have the score at eight to four. Dom mm-hmm. with eight, Malcolm with four. Well, that's what I have too. All right. And with that, we go into the rules for round number two, which work as such. Round number two is our lovely wheel round, which we will bring up shortly. Each competitor has the option to spin the wheel. If they don't like the first spin, they can spin again, unless the first spin lands on players or opponent's choice, which they must take. Each category has four questions worth two points apiece. You can opt down to multiple choice for the extra help, only making it worth one point. And in this round, there is stealing. So if you mess up, your opponent can pounce. With that out, all out of the way, we go to Dominic. You have the lead. Would you like to spin the wheel first or defer to Malcolm? I would like to go first. All right. Dominic has decided to go first. And his categories are DC, Pixar, Marvel, the least favorite li- Wizarding World. No one likes that. Uh, MCU, Star Wars, scores and soundtracks, and of course, as Jim would call it, incest to the future. All right, Dominic, your first spin is in. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Um, I'll keep it. Ooh, right. he's gonna keep Star Wars. Jim, would you like to give him his Star Wars? I would like to. Let me find them. Um, here we go. Okay. It's a question, right? Without multiple choice? Yes. yes. And then right. you do have the option of multiple choice. And your first question is thus What is the name of Leia's ship in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope? Tantive 4. It's not one, two, or three, but it is Tantive 4. That is correct for two points. Jesus. Your second question. What is the name of the bounty hunter that Jango Fett kills on Coruscant in Attack of the Clones? Um, fuck. I, I, I know her name. Uh, multiple choice. Is it D? D. Is it A, uh, Daniel, Daniel Faitoni? B, Zam Wessel? C, C.O. Bibble? Or D, W.A. 7? It's B, Zam Weasel. Yes, that is correct. For one point. Uh, your third question. Who wrote Attack of the Clones with George, Jorge Lucas? George Lucas. Oh, with George Lucas? Hold on. Multiple choice. Sorry. That's not my final answer. Multiple choice. Okay. A, Jonathan Hales. B, Lawrence Kasdan. C, Lee Brackett. D, Stephen Melching. Uh, let me hear those choices again. A, Jonathan Hales. B, Lawrence Kasdan. C, Lee Brackett. D, Stephen Melching. C, Lee Brackett? That is incorrect. Malcolm with a chance to steal. Um, was it D, Stephen Melchett? No, it was A, Jonathan Hales. Jonathan Hales. I just knew it wasn't Lawrence Kasdan, because otherwise I would have been bitter. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Your fourth question, Rizzy. Who plays Hiyadi Mundai in Revenge of the Sith? Multiple choice. 
Is it A, Bruce Spence, B, David Bowers, C, Oliver Ford Davis, or D, Silas Carson? I'll say C, Oliver Ford Davis. That is incorrect. Damn. Malcolm with a chance to Steve. Um, was it B? It was not B. It was D, Silas Carson. Your final question in Star Wars, Dominic Christie, is thus. What is the first planet setting of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Um, that is uh, Jakku. That is correct for two more points. Nice. Putting you up to 13 going into Malcolm's spin of the wheel. All right, Malcolm, you are up for the wheel. And you're with Star Wars off. Your spin is in. Listening world. world, it's just what he needed to get back in this. <laughs> but Malcolm, are you going to stay on Wizarding World? Oh uh, yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> All right, landed on what what he wanted. Wizarding World, Malcolm. Your first question: Who plays Cornelius Fudge? Robert Hardy. That is correct for two points. Nice. All right. Your second question, Malcolm. What is the name of the wizarding bank in the Sorcerer's Stone? Gringotts. That is correct for two more points. All right, Malcolm. Your third question. Harry is left on the Dursley's doorstep by Dumbledore, Hag Hagrid, and who else? Um, Maneuver McGonagall. That is correct for two more points. He is on a tear, gentlemen. Your fourth question, Malcolm. What is the only film to not feature the character of Argus Th er, Filch? Filch. Um... A multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Chamber of Secrets, B, Half-Blood Prince, C, Order of the Phoenix, or D, Deathly Hallows Part 1. Um, it would have had to... I'm going to go Deathly Hallows Part 1. And you would be correct for one point, Malcolm. All right. To stay perfect in this category, your last question. Who does Voldemort send to check if Harry is still alive in, De in Deathly Hallows Part 2? Um, uh, multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Snape, B, uh, Narcissa Malfoy, D or C Draco Malfoy, or D Nagini. Um, Narcissa Malfoy. That is correct, and he finishes Wizarding World perfect. Damn it! All right, these two yeah. points on the board. They all there to. I have Rizzy up fourteen to Malcolm's twelve or thirteen. Oh, thirteen. Thirteen yeah. to twelve. Thirteen twelve. All right, with that, close, close. It was a great comeback in round two for Malcolm, bringing it to with one, within one point of Dom as we go into round number three, and round three works like this. Each competitor has five categories, which they will bet points on, zero to three. You will be given the category, be allowed to bet your points, and then you get the question. You get it right, you get those points. You get it wrong, you lose those points. And if we have to, we will go into sudden death. There is also the Nico Jim rule. If a player goes to zero points, they are done for the game, the game is over, and they are eliminated. 
So with that, we go into the first category given by the champ himself, Jim Green. Your first category that you will be betting on is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. The greatest cinematic universe, I have to say. The only one that actually worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not to point any fingers, but yeah. All right, they both seem ready, so we'll go to Dom first. How many points did you bet? Two points. All right, and Malcolm. I'm going to play it safe and bet one. Ooh, All okay, right. Okay. Your question. What Marvel actress has a cameo as a U.S. Marshal in Iron Man 2? Iron Man 2. <laughs> uh, very, yes. I can't, I can't wait for that Ron Man movie. <laughs> Ron Man. <laughs> With Ron Perlman. Ron Man. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. All right. They both seem ready, Jim, if you want to get Five, four, three, two, one. We will start with the trailer, Malcolm. I blanked. I didn't, couldn't pull it. Oh, and Rizzy. Kate Mara? It is Kate Mara. Wow. Sue Storm in <laughs> that garbage movie herself. Yeah, the movie we don't really want to talk about. Still better what? than the 2000s movies. You watch your mouth, sir. All right. <laughs> your next category to bet your points on comes from Wizarding World. Something I think uh, one of our players really showed their strength in in round two there, Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. All right, they're both ready. So we will go to Malcolm first. I'm going to bet two. All right. Malcolm playing to win, and Dominic. Two points. All right. Both of them going big here. And your question is such. What is the name of the character played by Robert Pattinson? When vampires were badass, and then he pussified them. All right, both of them seem ready, so we'll go five, four, three, two, one. Malcolm. Cedric Diggory. That is correct for two points. And Dominic. Cedric Diggory. Oh, keeping it going strong. Your third category. Not the world's, just DC. Not the world's. Very tight game in this one. It is indeed. Right. Both of them look ready. So let's go to Malcolm. How much did you bet? Uh, just one. All right. And Dominic. One point. All right. One point from both. Your question. Who directed Red? R-E-D. Oh. Retired. Oh. Extremely dangerous. Yes. And they all kick ass with a senior citizen's card. But true. Very true. Yes. Maybe I'll be like Bruce Willis when I get in my 60s. I'll be able to kick ass. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make a crappy LP that doesn't sell. Five, four, three, two, one. Start with Rizzy. I couldn't pull it. I had nothing. I already did talk to myself a point. Nothing. Right. And Malcolm. Um, I just guess Francis Lawrence. No, the answer was Robert. Sh is that Schwenke? Schwenke. Oh, yeah. Yes, Schwenke. That guy. He's Schwenke. directing some movies. All right, we go. We are at good. sixteen good. to twelve. Sixteen to ten. No, it's sixteen to twelve. Um. Is it? Yes, it's 16 to 12. No, oh, yeah, my bad. He was plus. Yeah. 
Yeah. Still okay, within yeah. a four point game. Yeah. There's still two categories game. left. Yes. All right. Your next category you can bet points on is Disney, everyone's favorite mouse. The house of mouse. If you the house that Mickey Mouse built. (laughs) All right, both of them seem ready, so we'll go to Malcolm. How many points? I'm taking a massive risk here. I'm going to go for two. (gasps) All right, and Dominic. I'm comfy. Just one point. Just one okay. point. Comfy. No, there's the occasional Disney question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could really market, folks. Your question in Disney. What was the first Disney film to win Best Original Score? Or Best Original Song, sorry. Song. Best Original best Song. Best Original Song. At Oscar's Golden Trophy Party. That apparently people fall asleep for even when they're up for an award. Kane was telling me. Sure. Yeah. I get bored while watching it. I fall asleep too. I don't watch it. I just watch the live feed of um, of like who's winning. Unless it's Leo, because then you gotta tune in for that. <coughs> eh. You aren't missing much. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio is the treasure, sir. <laughs> All right. We will go to five, four, three, two, one. Malcolm, what is your answer? Was it the Little Mermaid? And Dominic. Pinocchio. And your winner, Dominic Rizzi. The correct answer was oh. Pinocchio. It was Pinnacle. Oh, man. And I was torn between that and Snow White, but I had a feeling that Snow White... I, I didn't think that Snow White had a song that got nominated and won, so... Whatever. Snow I'll take White. It. Snow White. Jim, a very, very strong match from both of these competitors. I mean, good lord. And, I mean, round two was especially just a very good round, but round three just sealed it there. What were your final thoughts, Jim? Great match, you know, uh, Malcolm hitting that that opponent that uh, that opponent's choice, barely missing it, and getting that Wizarding World was a was what he needed to put him back in it. And then you know he just he just kind of missed his missed his missed his mark in the round three, and uh, he could he couldn't pull it out. But impressive win from from Ritz. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a strong win by Dominic to. Go to two and zero, but Malcolm was in there fighting like always, proving why he deserves to be here. Yeah, it's it, it was a great match. I hope both these two are the best in the future. But with that, we will go into post match interviews right now. Uh, so let's start with Mister Rizzy. How are you feeling after that win? And will you be avoiding Star Wars in round two? In the no, I will not be avoiding Star Wars in round two just because I got some shitty questions doesn't deduct from the fact that it is a strength of mine. Um, I'm feeling good after that match. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's because that was probably the first match in a while, IG wise, that actually gave me a run for my money. There was, especially after Malcolm, and I will not deny, Malcolm had a kick ass round two. There were a couple points in that match where I really thought, oh, wow, I'm done for. Like, this wasn't my typical easy. One and done match that I've done. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also coming off of a couple of string of defeats because I actually lost my last IG match that I played over a jack of all trivia. And yeah, I'm I'm happy to be I'm, I'm happy to be winning. And I know that this win again. Sorry to you, Malcolm, but I know that this win puts me on a trajectory that could potentially put me towards the championship. So I say I'm I'm happy to have won this one. This one feels good. So is what we're hearing is is it is Rizzy is Dominic Rizzy? Are you looking? Are you looking for that that match coming up with the uh, the winner of uh, of that I that uh, championship at Mayhem at the Multiplex? I am. Um, and I don't believe as of this taping we it has been posted yet. So you will have to wait and see who that is. All right. So, but. Make it be known that Dominic Rizzi is coming for you. You know who you are. Okay, but let's get over to Malcolm. Malcolm, how are you doing? You know, 
tough, tough go in that round three. You know, just you just drawn the blank on Kate Mara and uh, Robert Schwenke kind of cost you a little bit and Pinocchio. Yeah. But, you know, it was it was almost it was it was pretty it was pretty much uh, your your death sentence missing the Kate Mara and Robert and Rob there. So how do you how do you feel? Um, I mean, like, I, I feel pretty good. Um, like after round one, I still have really no idea where my brain was at in that round run missing a few of those questions and but yeah um but I, I feel good um i mean um i didn't i mean i just blanked on pinocchio i didn't think the song category was there that early on in the oscars but um it is what it is dominic, dominic was a great opponent and um i shouldn't have gone i probably shouldn't have gone to multiple choice because I did actually know them as soon as I heard the options in, in second round but I mean um, sometimes you just, if you just think you know something but you, you're not sure about it, multiple choice is always a good soft one just to see if it's there if, when you go for it so right right so do, is, do you have any plans for uh, for fandom in the future because you know Unlike unlike Rizzi, you don't have that. You're not you. You don't got that 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 target aimed in at the champion. But is there is there anyone you're thinking that you might uh, want to play um, in the future? Well, um, I mean, it's I I always as I always say, it's like I always just want to face whoever's put in front of me. I uh, like I don't mind who I face, but uh, but I do know that. A certain Harley book is um, wanting a fandom match with me, and he's—I I know he's called me out a few times. And if uh, the records can make that happen, I definitely want that to happen. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the uh, see how that works out. I can tell you after this, you're one and two, and Harley is zero oh and two. So. It could possibly happen. We'll just have to wait and see. But for now, let's toss it back to our commissioner, Mr. Timmy Tim Tim. Yeah, I mean, Dominic is in position for a big title push to be in the title picture after that great title match from Mayhem at the Multiplex. And, of course, Malcolm, Malcolm Stillman, he's only one and two. It's still a young league. He has some work to do, but he can still get back up in there. And it's great to see Harley go after someone else because that match challenging me would not be worth my time. She's 0-2. It, it would be it would be over. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it. both of them have very bright futures, I think, for fandom. Uh but I know you have some work to do for your future in fandom, Jim. I know teams is looking bright for you, but singles, you still got some work to do. Oh, I'm I am perfectly fine where I am in singles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think for from all of us, that was a great match to see. So we'll go ahead and get out of here to wrap this one up. A great fandom match. Final score, 17 to 10. Dominic the victor, so we will go to our shameless plugs that Jim loves to do all so much. And our first one, we will go to Dominic Rizzi. Where can the good kids find you, sir? You can find me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Follow me on Instagram at Movie Dominic Rizzi. <laughs> go to one of my two websites, uh, movienerdreviews.com or letterbox.com slash dom81797. And also, please subscribe to the two YouTube channels that I am associated with, the first one being my own channel, movienerdreviews.com, and the other, sorry, Movie Nerd Reviews, I know things, and the other one being Friendly Neighborhood Movie Nerds with Jay Burns. All right, so you can find them at Friendly Neighborhood Movie Guys. I had to get a gem in there. Uh, and Malcolm, where can the good kids find you besides directing the Silmarium coming up soon? <laughs> crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find me on Tape Free Productions where I host um, my show called Rankum. Um, at the time this match drops, um, we'll probably be about to start our Halloween month um, with all horror rank options. So that should be really interesting. Um, and you can also find me on Twitter, um, Letterboxd, and Stardust at Melkor. All right. 
and my co-host today, the TV champion, TV head, Jim Green. Plug away. We know you love it. Um, I like to plug sleep. Uh, it's great. You can find me there very soon. Uh, I'm there actually daily. You can catch me asleep daily. It's a great, it's a great thing. And um, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, oh, and whatever Tim's about to say, and where Rissy said, because you can find me there too. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jim Green, folks. You can find me here at Multiplex, helping keeping everything on track with all this different trivia with uh, movies, TV, sports, fandom, and next episode, hopefully Caleb Coho will be back in the hosting chair, so hopefully I won't have to do this again. But for all of us, that is our winner tonight, Dominic Rizzi, our unfortunate loser, Malcolm, my co-host, Jim, who, there he is, and I am TM Smith. Good night. God bless. We're going to fucking sleep. Peace out.